Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a little bit of a follow-up on um, kind of talking about what I did yesterday. It's going to be weight stalls and how to break them and hitting a plateau as well as a couple things in my life that I'm going to mention and um, I'm sorry, I should have looked up this first, but one of the uh, gals made a comment on my video about being overweight um, for her and feeling like she's been trying keto for like two years and the weight was not coming off for her. And it made me realize like, yes, for most people, the stalls are you're cheating, you're doing something wrong, um, you think you're eating healthy, you're, you're not measuring appropriately, you're getting it more than you think you are. Um, and I even fell under those lines at a couple times or, you know, I wasn't really ready to admit to myself that I was maybe cheating and eating other food. Now, that being said, there are definite reasons for people who do struggle losing weight. And I know because I've been one of them a couple different times. And that's if you're having a medical issue. So, um, sometimes... If you have, like me, I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, is that you actually have hormones and your doctors will test this for you. You can go get your hormones tested. And I am higher in testosterone than I am um, making estrogen because of my blood clotting disorder. So it definitely affects the way my body is metabolizing food, as well as I don't have a normal liver. And so my liver doesn't process things the way that most people do or even alcohol. So what's crazy with me is a lot of people gain weight from alcohol. If I drink alcohol, I lose weight like crazy. And people are like, well, then why don't you just drink all the time? Because it's not healthy and they don't feel good. I know I shouldn't be doing that. But I can lose a lot of weight from drinking alcohol. I mean, it just goes right through me. I lose weight like crazy. Like, it's really quite weird my friends didn't even believe me till they started like weighing me on the scale each week or like once we got done drinking and obviously uh, alcohol can dehydrate you. So I mean like even with weeks in and I'll just kind of keep dropping weight and my girlfriends will like gain weight. So it's just kind of like an odd thing. That's just what my body does. And other people have their ideas of health and nutrition or what's healthy because they're judging from their own point of view. But what's healthy for them isn't always healthy for you. And there's weird things that are going on. that You just don't know that you don't realize, you know. So um, I get that. And sometimes it's worth going to the hospital and exploring. And I want to tell you, absolutely, absolutely, if your body gets in starvation mode or you've got some weird things going on, you can't lose weight. And here's how I know, okay? So this is interesting. When I get internal bleeding, episodes of internal bleeding, um, what happens is I am bleeding from my throat and my stomach is filling up with blood. And blood happens to be very acidic. So it ruins the lining of your stomach. Not to mention that a bunch of weird and crappy and crazy things that your body goes under, all right? So then, usually when I get hospitalized with inter internal bleeding, you can't eat. So you're hooked up into the IVs. And so at the beginning of the month, I usually am nauseous for two weeks. I usually drop about 10 pounds before I bleed because I'm not eating. I'm just not hungry. I can't eat. And then when I'm in the hospital, the other thing that happens is then I'm hooked up to IVs and because of all the tests and other things that they have to do, I'm hooked up to an IV, but I am not allowed to have food and I'm not allowed to have any water. I'm allowed to have like ice chips or I get to have this stupid little sponge, but I'm not allowed to have water and I'm not allowed to have food. And I'm usually in the hospital for about 10 days when this would happen. And then when I'm released, my stomach is so shrunk and my stomach is so like it hurts so bad it feels like heartburn so a lot of food and besides like broth or things like that I can't really eat so if you think about it that's a full month of not eating not eating 
I kid you not, and I know because my doctors have weighed me. Like I get to see, it, you know, it's the same scales. But I usually go up weight. Internal bleeding. How on earth does that make sense? 10 to 20 pounds up. If you think about it, not eating for a whole month, I should have dropped 20 pounds. I should be smaller. And the reason that is, is your body is in inflammation. It, uh, if you starve yourself or your body is in whack, uh, your body's top priority is not its digestion. And it's dealing with a whole bunch of things and you can uh, blow up in fluid retention. And I'd be like, how does this make sense? Why am I heavier now after not eating for a month straight? Like, I just can't and they don't let me eat. Even 10 days of being in the hospital and not getting to eat, you're still going to see some amount of waste, weight loss. And I usually go up. And, I mean, that was so frustrating with me for me, especially while I was trying to lose weight or things. I'm like, seriously, I'm trying to lose weight and now I'm up 20 pounds. And it's fluid retention. And I really didn't even believe it as much till this last surgery. But... And people don't get it, you know, and stuff too. Yeah, duh. I look chubbier now than I did six months ago. Why? Because I wasn't even allowed to lift six to eight pounds. So what happens is you lose all your muscle. And if you lose all your muscle, you're not burning as many calories. Duh. And that's part of what I'm going through. And that's my story, not for them to decide. And if it's things like that that make people not want to try or it makes me not want to do these videos because it's like to get all this crap when I'm taking my time, my health, my energy, trying to think of good things I want to share, getting it all organized and putting it out on here and just hearing crap after crap after crap. It's stupid. And I know there are people that care. So if you do want to follow me, you know, put a comment down below that you would, or I'm thinking of getting into doing blogging or um, maybe even a Facebook group or something like that, but I'm kind of getting sick of YouTube. I really would rather control the people who are in my group. Uh, for other people's sakes, as well as my own, nobody needs to feel picked apart. It's just stupid. It's just dumb. Like, it's just childish. Just stop that. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's really as easy as it is. And we're all hurting. We're all growing. And I may not have the answer for you, but I am darn well not going to shame you for it. You know, we're all entitled to our own thoughts and opinions, but it doesn't mean you get to push it on everybody else. Huh? Right? I think we could all agree with that. I think that's fair to say. And with my health issues, nobody gets to tell me. I was born with this. It's not something I did. It's not a way I eat or what I do. This is just how it was born. And I'm doing the best with what I got. And that's okay. And I'm tired of people telling me otherwise. And I'm not going to live that my life that way. And I don't need to be subject to other people's horrible opinions and not nice ones. There's, there's things about truth and criticism and growing. But this blatant bullying, especially on YouTube, when we're trying to teach our kids not to do it, trying to cut down on it, I'm just not going to tolerate it anymore. I'm just not. It's just, it's just horrible. This is what's wrong with the world, not better. And I want to encourage what is right with the word world. And for people who are struggling that they can be like, Hey, I really do need your help. And I really do want help. Please help me. And I'm not having to get my brain racked with all these other people who are making horrible comments. And I just don't need that in my life. And that's why I left for over a year is like, I just can't handle People judging my life all the time. And there's other people who are on here who are doing great jobs and are great motivational people and work so hard. And they're feeling the same way. And people who have admit to me they felt suicidal. They felt like they were horrible people just because of the stupid comments that people are leaving, you know. And it's hard. It is hard. So... Be thankful for the people who are getting on here and maybe have a little bit of wisdom or breakthrough or are here to help you and here to share with you and to go through your journey with you. Um, so that was my other thing with that. And yeah, I'm up weight. I gained weight. I had a horribly, horribly bad surgery. It was like a liver, you know, like a transplant. 
And um, does that mean I'm not working on it? Does that mean I'm not losing weight? No, I definitely am losing weight. I'm doing it slower because I have to be very, very careful with my body and not doing things that hurt me and certain things I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do anymore. Um, but that doesn't give me excuses. I keep pushing on, keep moving on, keep living my life. And um, I think I'm ready for a change and it might be better for me to share with people and um, if you have any ideas list below but I'm debating how much I want to keep doing these videos because I'm getting a little bit tired of battling all these things especially when I do want to read your guys comments because if you have something good or you need some help I do want to spend some time with you and I'd rather spend my time on here with you the people who do care and are trying to make a difference in their own lives as well as mine instead of me wasting my time and my energy on people who do not matter.